Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Levitt, what kind of government do we have? Uh, we have a representative government. Representative Republic. Yes. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad we got that. I, I didn't see it in your testimony because I think that's a poignant point. Now, Mr. Levitt, if citizenship question on a decennial census is racist, then it stands to reason that asking a citizenship question on the American Community Survey, or ACS, is also racist. Do you believe the citizenship question should be removed from the ACS? I don't believe that asking the question is racist. I believe that asking it in a context when it is least intrusive and when it facilitates the collection of the most accurate data is important. And so, no, I favor keeping it on the ACS. I think that elevating its prominence by putting it in the list of 10 questions asked to every person in the country is a grave mistake. We disagree. Mr. Levitt, now using an answer on a census questionnaire for the purposes of a law enforcement would be a violation of federal law and subject to a $5,000 fine and a five years in prison. True? Correct. Well, I'm glad we agree on one thing. Now, do you believe that only immigrants and non-citizens have privacy concerns about their responses to the census? No, I, I believe those uh, concerns extend beyond. Well, in fact, I'm glad you brought that up. The Pew Public Trust that you cited in your thing actually shows that Hispanics have a higher uh, value of uh, view of 23% versus whites of 17. Um, so how do you explain that? I think that there are lots of, of privacy concerns for citizens with non-citizen family or friends. I think there are concerns for people who live in the community. I think that the concern- But how do you, how do you, how do you respond that uh, Hispanics are actually have a higher rate than, than, than do whites. So they have more trust in the government than does whites. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that trust in government is essentially racial. I do know that there well, are I mean, communities. Well, I mean, we actually did the survey associated and broke them into those groups. So it seems to me that something's wrong with your assertion that uh, Hispanics and minorities have uh, more tr or have less trust in the government when whites are at 17 percent. I, I didn't say that they had less trust. I said the trust overall was at 17 percent across the nation, and that is deeply concerning in this climate okay. to go asking additional questions on the decennial. So now let's go back. Do you believe the right to vote should be provided only to citizens? Yes. In some circuit, for federal elections, yes, for sure. I know that certain uh, local institutions have decided under their own authority to open that process up. So would that contingency be made that if they open them up at that aspect, if there's a fe federal intercedence that money, for example, wouldn't go to those municipalities based upon not uh, having citizenship actually vote? I just want to be clear, no citizens are currently allowed to vote in state or federal elections. There are some localities that it's my understanding. Oh, I understand. I understand. And I asked it principally that way, is that it seems to violate the, the premise of citizenship. And that citizenship depends upon a lot about reimbursement from the federal government down to local municipalities. And so if they weren't going to enforce that voting should be only done by a citizen, then they should not take federal money, right? That's obviously a policy question for this Congress. There were, I think, a number of the original signers of the Declaration of Independence were not American citizens. A number of signers of the Constitution were not American citizens. So there's been a differential relationship over the course of the country's history. Some, uh, some states and some local elections have allowed non-citizens to vote, some have not. Currently, it's precluded for all state and federal elections. And so let me get, I got another important question. Um, so I'm sure you've heard the phrase, vote early and vote often. Uh, a phrase often attributed to the corruption in Democratic-controlled areas like Chicago. In your experience, what would DOJ do if the number of votes cast in a county exceeded the number of voting age citizens? In my experience, the difference between the actual number of votes cast and the census data is not a reliable estimate of any sort of misdoing. Um, they measure different but, things at but different no, but times. But wouldn't it cause you alarm? It would cause me to want to look further but it would not actually indicate wrongdoing in and of itself. So, yes or no, I, I got some short time here. Responses to the citizenship question on the census would help determine voting fraud by comparing the total citizenship population with the total voting population to determine if the fraud has occurred, true? I think they measure different things. 
And so I'm not sure that that information would be accurate. Well, once again, I'm going to go back to statistical applications. You know, um, let me end by quoting Ken Pax, an Attorney General of Texas. Knowing the number of citizens in any district will help reduce voter fraud by providing a more complete picture of the eligible voters in a district. If there are, say, 300,000 U.S. citizens in a district and 350,000 turn out to vote in an election, we know there's a problem. Mr. Levitt, are you sure, are you sure that you disagree with that statement? I do, in part because the census calculates where people lay their heads at night, and voting is not necessarily based on that. There are large numbers of the military, for example, who oh, do not lay their no, but that's, that's a non-factor. I mean, you still I know don't like people to think of the that. military as a no. non-factor. No, 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 no. We can calculate them in there. What you're doing is you're mixing apples and oranges in that in that population base. That's the, and it's precisely the, the concern. The about gentleman's mixing apples time has expired. Sorry. You finished the last phrase. It, I, I actually agree with the representative. It's it's the concern about mixing apples and oranges that makes me think that the census data is measures something different than actual voting records in the state. Well.